am I doing? I'm volatizing the esters in my wine, of course. What'd you think I was doing? I know what you're gonna say, and I'm fully aware. In part, the name of this video is called The Aroma Prison, and you're expecting to see this like jail cell with bars and grimy walls. There's going to be an aroma prison, but we gotta take some baby steps. We gotta get from point A to point B for it to all make sense. And when we get to point B, it's gonna be super cool and worth it, trust me. So let's jump right into it, not waste any more time, so we can get to this aroma prison. And for now, welcome to the magic of the candle enthusiast. That, that didn't work. I won't, I won't ever try that again. As pretentious and pompous as the wine community can be sometimes, when you see folks swirling wine in the glass like this, they're technically doing the right thing. The question is, do most of them actually know what they're achieving by doing such a thing? So as to not get too high school chemistry on you, I'm gonna try to keep things very simple. Inside of this glass of wine are organic compounds called esters. And these esters are responsible for the aromatic properties of this wine. But in order to smell them, a process needs to occur, volatilization. Now wait a minute, hang in there. I don't wanna lose you, not just yet. Now luckily, there's alcohol in this wine, which is gonna act as a solvent, which will dissolve those esters, making the volatilization process relatively easy so that the aroma from the solution can travel from here up to our nose. So, in other words, we're turning this stuff into vapor. That's all I'm trying to say. So when we swirl this, we're drastically enhancing, pronouncing the aroma. And when we stick our nose in there, we can truly evaluate and appreciate the bouquet of this wine, the craftsmanship of what is happening with this beverage. It's pretty straightforward, it makes sense. So shaking the wine, stirring the wine, not pretentious, not crazy, as long as you know what you're doing. So just like this wine, this candle has esters too. It doesn't have any alcohol, but it does have a carrier oil blended in with the fragrance oils. And that carrier oil will act as that solvent that will be responsible for that volatilization process. That's why when you burn this candle, the smell, the aroma is going to fill your living space. Now there's a lot of other physics and chemistry involved, but volatilization is going to be one of the very first steps of candle burning. Keep that in mind at all times. This is liquid. This is solid. This I can swirl all day long. I can't shake this up. I can't agitate this. All of the fragrance oils are locked within a block of paraffin wax. So one of the questions that I always get, why am I always smelling the lid? And usually the second question is, why am I doing this business? This isn't some crazy idiosyncrasy. What I'm trying to do is trap a little pocket of air inside of this jar and create the tiniest bit of friction. With that friction, create a little bit of that volatilization and then bam, capture the smell. It won't be much, but you will notice a little extra punch of aroma. But more importantly, smell the cap. I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if we can get in close here. You see the residues that cling to the inside of the glass here. These residues right there. Well, that is the volatized oils that have found their home on top of the glass. That volatized oils happen from this just sitting on the shelf at Yankee Candle or it just sitting on the shelf at home. That residue is going to be a much better representation of what this candle is gonna smell like when it's lit rather than you actually smelling the wax itself. You never really want to smell the wax. There's a lot of compounds that they're adding to this wax just for aesthetics, things to give the wax luster and also certain kinds of wax, not so much paraffin, but soy wax, for example, have an enormous 
smell. And that's gonna interfere with the recipe, with the fragrance of the candle that you're wanting to buy. So you don't want that smell of soy wax to interfere with your analysis of the fragrance. So you wanna get that soy wax away from you as much as possible. So whenever you can, smell the lid. The natural next question is, why don't I just burn this candle in my living room and give my sensory evaluation, my breakdown, while it's burning in my house? Well, in order to answer that question, I'm gonna go back to this glass of wine. I spent my fair share of time studying wine in the classroom setting. And take it from me, any sommelier, any restaurant, beverage director, any wine connoisseur, any wine buyer, when they're giving their sensory evaluation on wine, very seldom does it look something like this. Oh yeah. <sighs> I like it, it's good. It smells like tomatoes and basil, and strawberries and plums. It's smelling me of my Sicilian grandmother. I'll buy five cases. That's not the way it goes. And if it is the way it goes, that's usually the tip off that it's their first day on the job. On the flip side, this is usually how it goes. Bam. And do you see what I did? I actually put this little piece of cardboard on top of this wine glass. That's gonna do two things. One, trap the aroma in the glass so we don't waste it. So the aroma doesn't just keep flying out of the glass. Two, it's going to block the aroma because that aroma is eventually gonna travel over to my nose and I wanna give my nose a break from that smell. Why? One key word, desensitization old factory fatigue or old factory adaptation. If we keep our nose in the glass, just like the way I was showing you before, our nose is going to adapt and we're no longer going to be able to smell all of those subtle nuances anymore. Put the wine down, take a break, smell something else. Another wine. And when you're buying like perfume or cologne at Macy's, they have that little thing of coffee beans. It's a great way to readjust your nose. And in about 30 seconds, you're ready to go back to the wine. Bam. And it's like smelling it for the very first time. Old factory adaptation, old factory fatigue. One more example. There was always that kid in high school. And you know what? It may have been you. It wasn't me but it may have been you, right? They'd wake up in the morning, they'd take a shower, they'd probably spray a bunch of this stuff all over, right? The spray on. And then they get on the school bus and they'd be like, wow, man, I smell good. I smell good. This stuff is it's great product. You know, this Axe body spray. They pop it in their backpack. They get into first period, first block. And then they're saying to themselves, you know what? Maybe this product wasn't as good as I initially thought because I can't smell it anymore. So they go to the bathroom and they spray themselves again, but this time they're actually spraying more than they sprayed the first time. They're spraying it all over themselves, on their clothes, they're spraying it everywhere. And then they go back into the classroom and everyone is like, what are you doing? You reek. But the kid, the guy, he can't smell it because his nose is adapting. It's becoming fatigued to the smell. Biologically, our noses are set to do this. For better or worse, we adapt to the smells around us. And this kid all day long would keep putting more and more Axe body spray on. And by the end of the day, the whole school was fatigued by the smell. They couldn't even smell it anymore. And you know what, don't, don't pick on just the guys. You, you girls were just as bad with your French vanilla body spray, right? In the 90s. So why am I bringing this up? Because when your favorite candle company releases a brand new line of six candles, but you really want to limit yourself to one or maybe just two fragrances, what do they tell you to do? They tell you to buy the six votives or the tarts or the cubes or any other means of ways of testing out the fragrances. And that's a great way of picking out the fragrances that you want to buy. The problem is, let's say you buy the tarts, right? You bring them home, you throw them in your, your little tart warmer, and you burn them in your living 
living room, again, within the first five minutes, you're gonna become this kid. You're gonna become desensitized to that smell, preventing you from truly giving an in-depth analysis of that smell. And look, to most people, maybe that's okay. But if you really want to look at fragrance with an extreme critical eye, and to be able to see the difference between this fragrance and that fragrance and that fragrance and to be able to pick up on all of the subtle nuances you have to be able to dial it in and focus on even the smallest notes so the question becomes how can we trap the aromatics of a candle while we're burning it inside of something like this glass of wine so that we don't become fatigued by the smell take a break come back to it, take a break, and come back to it. We need to construct something. For the longest time in the past, I tried to figure out ways that I could do this. Companies like Yankee Candle, they actually have those really cool chambers. I don't, I don't think I have space for aromatic chambers. So I was trying to think of a very small, very efficient way of making one and have it be incredibly affordable. So I wanna share with you my secret my contraption, something that I've used for the longest time for my sensory evaluation, not on candles cold, but candles, the fragrance on the burn. I introduce to you, are you ready for this? This cost me 88 cents. The Aroma Prison. And although you might be saying to yourself, well, gosh, that looks a whole lot like a pickle jar. It is, it is, it's a pickle jar. Even this pickle jar presents an issue because how are you gonna put a lit candle into this and trap the aroma? All it's gonna take is a little bit of water, a tart, and in this case, I have Alpine Martini. Now I picked this one specifically because smelling this cold, the Alpine, the pine needle didn't really shine through. Alpine Martini, I really think that pine alpine smell is going to come through a whole lot more once this candle is lit so i want to put this to the test to see if we melt this and volatilize the oils in the wax if we get that pronounced alpine smell and i'm going to show you how i'm going to do this now before i continue i just want to say if you're under 18 years old get your your parents get your aunt your uncle your grandparents i don't even trust some adults with some of this kind of stuff this is a very very safe thing to do but i just don't ever want to see someone hurt themselves i always say this safety is a priority but just don't do anything silly do what i say and you won't hurt yourself. Let's go uh, conduct a little Bill Nye-esque experiment or Mythbusters-esque experiment. Bill Nye or Mythbusters? What was your favorite? I love both. Oh man. So I'm gonna let you guys answer, but I definitely know mine. If somebody asks me in the comments, I'll, I'll let you know. Take a saucepan and fill it with two inches of water. Put the stove on medium heat. At this point, you can add a cooking thermometer, get it to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and keep it there. You can take your tart and crumble it up into smaller pieces to make the process go a little bit quicker if you like. Lock the lid. Wiggle the jar gently. And soon enough, you'll have a fully melted wax tart. And we're back. What we have is a completely melted Alpine Martini. Look at that. So the next thing to do is to open this up. Towel, towel, towel on top of this container. All I'm gonna do is pull this little lever here and place my hand firmly on top of this jar. Okay, now that I see that there is really no pressure build up I can remove this keep my hand firmly placed on top of this jar this is exciting stuff here are we ready so again the objective is to see if there's any of that pine rosemary alpine conifer tree pine cone cedar balsam fir douglas fir anything in relation to that that comes through a bit more than it did when just smelling it cold here we go Wow. Remember, let it travel up 
through your retronasal passages. Up in here, that's really where you're gonna get those subtleties. I'm still smelling it, guys. Let's lock this up. I'm gonna go to this candle, readjust my nose a little bit. So, so far what I'm smelling on this candle is uh, very similar to what I was smelling before. You're gonna see that in the review. Let's give this one more go to see if we can find that pine. What is that? Oh man, so let me tell you right now, I did not plan this out. So this does not smell like a Christmas tree, but this definitely smells like Alpine. But hold on, hold on. It is just so powerful. This is a very small vessel. I imagine this tart could probably fill a very large living room. And what we have it <laughs> condensed into how many ounces is this? This is like a Starbucks large. I don't know how big this is, but it's very small in comparison to the power of this tart. I mean, I have it, I have it. I just have to find out what it is. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go with the easy. And the easy right now seems to be what I'm smelling. Imagine right now you took cranberries, raspberries, red currant, a lot of citrus juice. You mix that all together. Red candy. We're talking about Ludens, wild cherry cough drops, medallion, uh, lollipops. You got at the doctor's office when you're a kid. Just straight up cherry candies. And you melted them in the microwave. And you threw that in the bowl with that fresh fruit. And then, if that wasn't enough, you threw in some cool with sweet confectionery whipped cream goodness. What you don't smell on the cold that's really coming through now is I, I wanted to give you something a little bit more not so easy but I think I have to go there because it's pretty accurate we got straight up original Irish spring soap imagine Irish spring in the liquid form you poured that in that concoction we just made that is what I'm smelling pine tree herbaceous even floral scented soap I have to go back and watch my analysis. I'm pretty sure I didn't say anything like clean Irish Spring. I think I said a hint of pine in the background. But I was really digging for it because it's in the title of the fragrance. But it's coming through now. So this is a great example why uh, this should be done. Uh, because when you burn the candles, uh, certain things do pop out. But just to my credit, just so I don't lose any credibility with you guys, if you watch that review, I did say that I bet you when you burn or melt this candle, that smell of pine is going to come through. And that is precisely why I picked this one to do this experiment on today. So I hope you learned a little bit today. This is a very important topic, I feel. I think that we in the candle world, we should be talking about stuff like this, volatilization. Uh, but more than just that, I hope you try this at home. This has always really helped me out when it comes to analyzing fragrance. I just hope you share it with your friends and family if it helps you out. And we'll be talking about more uh, topics like this uh, very shortly, but thank you for watching if you like this video Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you feel inclined to do so if you haven't subscribed already Maybe you want to do that. Oh, and that is Elsa by the way just in case you're wondering Santa Claus is up there Look at that. It's been paused. I don't know how long it's been paused But I've been playing one of my Disneyland episodes This was a vlog I did where I interviewed tons of Disney princesses at Disneyland asked them what their favorite scented candle was I'm gonna put that link in the description below because it was one of my favorite Episodes to film and to edit. I always try to give it a shout out because I love it But while we're on the topic that guy right Right there that's my brother and he actually has his own vlog and it's a it's predominantly a Disney vlog but he's got tons of great content he's like a legit filmmaker he makes feature films so he's bringing something to this whole Disney vlog that's never been done before it looks great it sounds great and he's got a great personality if you love Disney like I do and he does check out his channel his name is Eric Peter Carlson Thank you for watching, guys. And you know what? I'm going to see you real soon. Bye-bye now.